reading today is from 2 Corinthians 12th chapter 7 through 10. Even considering the exceptional character of the revelations, therefore to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. God bless the reading of the scripture. Our gospel scripture today is uh, actually kind of falls into two parts, so that's the way we're going to approach this. It's two parts uh, with the same uh, message, same uh, intent. We're reading from Mark 6, verses 1 through 13. I'm going to do the first part, and uh, I'm going to do verses 1 through 6 first, and then we'll, we'll talk about the it a little bit before we go on. Now remember, in context, right before this, just like last week, this is right after Jesus had healed Jairus' daughter. You know, when he went in and they made fun of him because they, they said she's dead. He goes, no, she's not. And he said, the Talitha Kum, which is a little girl, get up. So here we are after that. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that's been given to him? What are these uh, remarkable miracles he's performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And he took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown, among his relatives, in his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Remember, this is his hometown. The ones that are saying, isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son? They're probably the kids he grew up with. And the people of Nazareth, because of this, refused to believe. Even after the healing of Jairus' daughter and other miracles. You ever heard the old saying, familiarity can breed contempt? Well, it can. There's an old saying in the, in the ministry that I think applies to other things. You can't go home. I've known many a minister of, of, of people I grew up with at Arlington that a couple of them did try to go back or hire. It didn't work. It didn't work. The inspiration wasn't there. 
when you get into a position like this and, and that Jesus is in, or even us church workers, you guys are workers, all of us servants of the Lord face the same thing when we get with people we know, family, friends, because they know your background. Now, I'm going to apply myself to this because it, it, it seems to be kind of a joke, and I do kind of laugh about it, but it's, it, it truly is uh, something that I have to deal with. The boys I grew up with, uh, the people from the north end of town that knew me for, for me, from you know, for what I did with, you know, all during uh, junior high, high school football and then going to UK and playing, they know me for that. Uh, the people at Arlington are the only ones that still call me Bear. That's a whole nother different set. And then there's just the crazy bunch I ran around with in the 70s because I was, grew up in. I mean, you get caught up in the fun and Sunni. Uh, they know all this. They know your faults. They know the, the things you've done. They, they know what, hey, he's a good guy, but. And some of them, when you get in a position like this, like Jesus is, some of these distinctly sound like, well, he thinks he's better than we are now. We grew up on the same street. He know better than us. What's he think he's doing up there doing that? That happens. So that's why I wanted to do this first part first because a lot of uh, people now face the same thing. You know, Jesus came right out and said, a prophet is never honored in his hometown. And as I said, many leaders and workers for God right now Face the same disrespect. Now, here's the thing. A person does not need to be respected or honored to be useful to God. God will use them in His own way. But if your friends, your neighbors, or your family don't respect your Christian work, and some won't. You pray that their rejection encourages and strengthens your faith and that this rejection will further motivate you to keep serving God with all your heart. So even Jesus knows what it's like for People to disrespect him. People to think they're, they're too familiar. To not really know. I still get it. Uh, I'm about to have dinner in a couple of weeks with a, a couple. With the, the, the man I grew up with. I mean one of the, one of the gang. Um, we've seen each other in 30 years. And I was kind of hesitant to go into detail. And then they said, hey, we heard you. You're a minister of a church right down the road. They live up Mount Alexandria now. I said, yeah, I'm right down the road. Oh, well, come on over. My goodness. Well, where's the church at? If this boy back in the day to set foot in the church, the lightning was struck and fire. I mean, it, it would not have been a pretty sight. But that's what happens, and it happens a lot. I know I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to do this without giving it away. I know a minister now that I grew up with, great guy, great family. Uh, his mother and my mother were best friends from childhood to the day mama died. Uh, he had a, a congregation in a church much like this for years. And then Someone left somewhere and he decided to go home. It didn't work. When your mother's even saying, I don't think this is a good idea, <laughs> it's not. 
so I was asked to go to Arlington at one point. I, I turned it down. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't imagine doing that there. Uh, but this is what Jesus is going through. Now, Jesus could have done some miracles uh, in Nazareth. But, you know, it, it says, Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without. If he, do no, he could not do any miracles there except lay hands on people, a few sick people, and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. He decided, uh, Jesus chose not to do any miracles because of the people's pride and unbelief. The miracles he did had little effect. He put his hands on some people and healed them out of compassion, I'd imagine. But because of this, they did not accept or believe his message or that he was from God. Therefore, therefore Jesus looked elsewhere. Jesus, and we should seek those who will respond to his miracles and his message. Now we can't control, we, we can't control the way others react to Jesus. And we all get all the reactions. And despite the strong evidence for the truth of his claims, some still refuse and will not and will never believe. So we should ask God, to lead us to those who are open to hearing about Jesus. You know the old don't cast pearls before swine? Well, it's, this is kind of the same thing. You know, the word is there. If people reject it, it's not your fault. You've done your job as a servant. So the thing is, is to let that even make you more powerful. Take that rejection. That's like, anybody ever do anything in a situation where people are going, well, yeah, but, uh, man, I, I don't really think you could do it. I don't really think you could do that. Or somebody has a, a crazy dream growing up and they just keep pursuing it and pursuing it and people just keep poo-pooing it. I don't think you can do that. And what happens when you do? I knew you could do it, man. You're all right. So people are funny. All we got to do is do our job and love them and do what Jesus told us to do and show our faith and belief. The disciples, now, let's, let's read the rest of it here. There's not much left. Then Jesus went out around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals not only, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached. Preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. So they did go out. Jesus sent us out. Sent them out. Remember, guys, the disciples are us. We are them. When he's talking about them, he's talking about us. Disciples were sent out in pairs. And don't and realize, for one thing, individually, they probably could have reached more land, more of the country going out individually. But this was not Jesus' plan. There was a reason for this. And it's also, as Jesus was prone to do, keeping with the Jewish uh, ways of doing things, the Jewish uh, uh, protocols and practices. And in keeping with that, 
the Jewish people believed that there should always be two witnesses. So they had another reason to do that. Plus going out by twos has these advantages. And this is another part of Jesus' plan. And this is another way we work together, right? Number one, they could strengthen and encourage each other. Isn't that what we're here for on Sunday mornings, to strengthen and encourage each other and then go out and do the work? They can provide comfort in rejection. Oh, well, you know, we really didn't. We really didn't draw anybody these last few months. Or, although we had a, a highly successful vacation Bible schools, there's other churches that don't. Well, you don't stop because of it. You keep going. You encourage each other. You comfort each other during that time to keep yourself going. And that leads to number three. They can sharpen each other's discernment and fewer mistakes will be made. That's what we're doing in elders meetings, board meetings, congregational meetings. Where do, we're sharpening each other's discernment in the matters of the church. That's what we do. And number four, they can stir each other to action. When times of idleness or indifference with people or just you know, we just feels like we're beating a dead horse sometimes. We got to stir each other. And I think this particular bunch does that very well. You encourage each other, you stir each other. Everybody's got a job, everybody pitches in. And I love that about you guys. Our strength comes from God. But he meets many of our needs through our teamwork with each other. And our teamwork with others. That's why we get involved with other churches. Guys, again, there's a lot of churches that will not do that. And if you do get them to do something with you, it's like one thing. When there's churches like us and others around here that, yeah, well, let's go, let's do it. Everybody together. That's our strength. That's the way God meets some of our needs is through each other. And I always remember this, guys. When you're trying to serve Jesus in some way with some person, don't try to do it alone. Call in a fellow Christian. and Just like they said, they, you need two. You need two witnesses. That's why you make houses, house calls. That's why you do those things as, as, as a couple of you. Hey, let's go do something. That's why we go to the nursing home. It doesn't take a lot, two or three of us. And it means a lot to them. It means a lot to Jesus that we do that. Because we, like the disciples, have been giving our marching orders, guys. Just like at the end. Take nothing, no bag, no money, no nothing in your belt. You can wear shoes, but you can't take any extra coat. In other words, we need nothing. We need absolutely nothing to do our work other than the power of God and the message of Jesus, and just like he told them, if you're rejected or they don't want to hear it, shake it off and move on. I do believe that is one of the most important lessons I've ever taught people. When something bad happens, pray, accept God, trust your faith, Shake it off and go on. That's what we have to do. No matter how discouraging it gets, just know that we're doing the work. And that's what Jesus told us to do as he sent us all out. 
So do the work. Keep it up. Keep up doing the work. Praise God.